The 6.5 is on the road here in San Jose at NVIDIA GTC 2025. We are in the Hewlett Packard Enterprise booth here and it is buzzing. Why is it buzzing? Well, it's all about hybrid AI. I have talked many times on this show and also in our research, probably for a decade, talking about the power of the hybrid cloud. Now that we know every all enterprises want hybrid clouds, guess what? They also want hybrid AI, and it just makes sense. I can't imagine a better person to have this discussion than Fidelma Russo of HP. Welcome, Fidelma. Thanks, Patrick, good to be here. You know, we finally got you on the show. We tried, we asked, but now you're here. Thank you so much. So uh, at HP Discover, uh, you announced your hybrid AI system. And gosh, Jensen was on stage. We were in the Sphere uh, in Las Vegas. It was incredible. Tell me how things are going. It's been a few months. Uh, how's the customer feedback? How are the rollouts going? Yeah, so no, it's been an incredible couple, you know, maybe nine months. And uh, it's uh, private cloud AI is what we announced. Yeah. And basically a turnkey AI system on-prem, cloud managed, but on-prem. Right. And we'll soon have an air gapped version as well. And uh, multiple t-shirt sizes. But the real trick is the software. Okay, and so, Isn't it always though? I mean, not that infrastructure is not easy, it's hard. Yep. But software is really hard pulling all these things together. Right, and what we've tried to do is to really simplify it, um, you know, to do all of the hardware management and life cycle management you do with a hardware appliance, but then working very closely with NVIDIA on uh, their NIM software and integrating that with our AI essential software yeah. and their blueprints in order to make sure that people really get you know, as I was listening today, uh, it's kind of their private AI factory on prem. Sure. And so, and so you asked me how it was going. Yeah. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, we we had a tremendous uptake. Uh, and geographies, uh, it's quite interesting. A lot of European interests and a lot of European sales, uh, starting now in North America. Right. Um, and use cases are driven really by. Um, First of all, uh, classification requirements around people's data, data they don't want to go off-prem, right. uh, and things like energy, uh, and modeling of, um, you know, of energy usage. Another one is retail, uh, clearly you know, where AI is being used to automate everything, and things like um, state and local government, um, and you know, interesting things, yeah. tax departments. <laughs> the tax departments love- A lot of data, AI. yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate that. And I'm really glad you brought up the use cases because a lot of times in this AI conversation, it ends up being kind of technology for technology's sake, as opposed to solving uh, solving problems in, 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 in any unique way. So we are here at GTC 25, and I'm curious, can you talk a little bit about some of the announcements that you're making here? Yeah, so we're, I mean, this is just a fantastic conference. It's a little bit back to my roots, uh, where yeah. I used to design chips at some stage. Uh, but, um, you know, and our announcements are all really about bringing the technology that's relevant to our customers. So where do we start? We start with um, our GPUs, uh, you know, our GPU-driven um, servers, uh, both liquid-cooled and air-cooled, and completely all in on the Blackwell transition. That's number one. Uh, number two is actually associated with that because we all know with AI, uh, 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 some of the limiting factor is how do we power data centers? How do we get yes. enough power into data centers? Yes. Where do we get the energy sources from? And one of the uh, announcements we made was this Mod Pod, um, which is really a uh, data center, you know, your data center, all kitted out, sports liquid cooling, and yes. you can put it in your parking lots, you know, where your employees are still working from home. Right. So a great starter kit. Then on private cloud AI, uh, we've announced uh, support for the new blueprints. We've announced a strategic relationship with Deloitte, but we announced that last year, but now we have a proof point. There's right. Zora AI, a financial um, AI package for CFOs and the CFO office. 
is now qualified on private cloud AI. We've announced, um, I, can't, I can't remember this day, yeah. we've announced uh, a number of ISVs uh, landing for our Unleash AI program. And then storage. Um, on storage, you know, we have our new X10000, which is object-based. Yes. Uh, we are supporting the new AI data platform uh, yes. from NVIDIA, both in our storage, but also within our private cloud AI stack. Because if you look at that stack, what you start to see is um, that whole end-to-end -end is what we really packaged in private cloud AI. Right. Uh, and then uh, RDMA support with object um, in supporting uh, the NVIDIA um, in the NVIDIA transports. So literally, I, th I think you just rattle off about 10 of these. Great job. I'm the one who has the notes, not you, but you just, it just came, came right out. So I like to categorize what you're doing uh, on, on your hybrid cloud platform. We'll get to hybrid AI. It's yeah. the easy button. Yeah. And with hybrid cloud AI, you, you took it one step uh, further because there are some customers who they, they, they want you to do the driving. Make this as easy for us as we possibly can. Others, which you allow, you kind of mix and match different parts of the layer cake yep. uh, and the ecosystem. I think that that's, that's important to do as, as well. You're kind of letting your customers choose how they want to buy from you uh, based on where they maybe are with their sophistication level. Well, I mean, it's an interesting, I just came from a customer meeting, okay? And they, a um, particular government customer, um, and they have multiple use cases. And some of it is more suited to where they want to mix and match the software stack on top. Right. Um, and, uh, and they want the ability to change out um, some of the MLOps software over time because not, not all MLOps software is, is like applicable for their use case. Right. And then the other use case they have is all around private cloud AI. And that one, you know, when you probe on the customer, why are you picking something different here and why right. would that be a choice? He said, I have a limited number of data scientists and ML engineers. And I want to make sure that in the cases where I really have to get the most out of it, I focus my people there. What I don't want my people doing on everything else is spending their time getting a stack to work yes. that you can get to work and then I'll put my value on top of it. Right. So I thought it was a very interesting, this is just the way this this uh, big customer is thinking about it. It is for sure. So, um, I'm curious, I mean, as an analyst, I, I like to sometimes say, you know, I, it's kind of like the clown show. I go from show to show. I go from circus to circus. Uh, I think I was on the road 42 weeks last year, going to different conferences and uh, meeting with customers and things like that. And some, sometimes and I'm hearing a lot of the same words. And I, I, I'm hoping, can you turn up the contrast ratio uh, for our viewers on how is your private AI cloud different uh, from your competitors? So, uh, you know, I pity you having to go to shows 42 weeks No, 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 a year. listen, <laughs> you have the real job here. I used to, I used, I had a real job for over 20 years. This one is easier. Oh, I, don't know. I used to do not exactly what you did, but I ran product groups, right? I mean, what you do is hard. Yeah, but thank you. Well, thank you, but uh, I, I wouldn't swap it for, <laughs> for a moment. Uh, so, so what's different, okay? So if you think about, um, you know, first of all, what do I need to do in order to, you know, to get, to actually even run an AI proof of concept? Yes. The amount of work you have to do to think about um, the sizing of your infrastructure, compute network and storage, and tuning all of those pieces to work together. You know, you have too much compute, not enough storage. We all know that that doesn't work. We have too much storage, not enough compute, or GPUs, that's not gonna work. So, so first of all, is the upfront, how do I size it for what I'm, what I'm thinking about doing? And the next piece is, you know, how do I, how do I keep up with taking all of the software from NVIDIA? You know, right. how do I qualify it? How do I make sure it interoperates with the other layers of the stack? And that's what makes us different in private cloud AI than the other uh, alternatives on the market. Yeah. Because there and the other alternatives, you have to do the, the, the hardware may be sized, but you may, it may not have been done you know, in, a, in, a, in a way that guarantees the number of tokens you want to have. And then the second piece is the software, integrating the software is not easy. No, it's and not. 
quantifying other people's stacks on top of us, which is also what we're doing, isn't easy either. So our job is to do the easy button, and you access this on the GreenLake platform, um, which also is a differentiator from the rest of you know the industry. Yeah, I appreciate that. So when I talk with CIOs, this has been very consistent. Um, aside from the, hey, how do we get ROI? What use cases do we pick? Uh, culture issues. Uh, there's inherently this data conversation, yep. which is, my gosh, I'm having a really hard time to get my data ready uh, for uh, generative AI uh, and also for agentic AI, yep. uh, where the, the stakes and the value are, are higher. What kind of counsel are you giving companies around getting their data management uh, in order? And I'm talking, you know, beyond the, I have seven instances of SAP, okay? There's even some people that are, hey, I have one instance of SAP, and we don't have to talk, it's just an example. I'm having a hard time activating this. So I'll leave it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and you're perfectly correct, okay? We all talk about the stage by which the data is ready, okay? Because that's a, an easier discussion. I think the, you know, we've all lived through the, I'm going to take all of my data puddles and I'm going to consolidate them into a, you know, one uh, data pool. Which we never, it's never worked. will never happen. It's never yeah. worked, okay? And, and people have spent a fortune, they've spent years, right. and all of those projects have gone by the wayside. And, and even if you could do it, then a company does an acquisition. And guess what? More of a cup. Exactly. And so, so there's, um, and so what we, our strategy is, it's federating the data moments, okay? So, and, and one of our acquisitions we did a number of years ago, you know, timing is everything in this industry. Sure. Is uh, Esmeral Data Fabric. Yes. And so, and, and, and we have tremendous installations. Um, you'll see in one of our press releases, uh, Vodafone and Zigo, uh, they, they basically used it to, you know, give a global namespace to all of their data, and now they're performing AI on top of that. Okay. And so, uh, and it supports all sorts of different formats. And with uh, private cloud AI, it's built in. And also the other piece of it is, it also you can use it on the rest of your data. Right. And the second piece is, we didn't talk about is, a little bit around observability, okay? Because if you can see into what you're doing, then you're running blind. Absolutely. And so, and there's where, um, you know, with OpsRAM, we've now expanded it to basically provide observability on your GPUs. Are they busy? Are they getting fed? Um, which one, um, where should I move a workload? Um, and so, so all of this has to do with how do you really operationalize AI within the IT organization? Right. How do I get my data? How do I, um, how do I, run my agentic AI, but then how do I observe and manage it right. in day two when everybody has left? No, so. I appreciate that. No, I appreciate the words of wisdom here. And sometimes people forget how much software HPE does, but you've yeah. literally built an entire uh, enterprise stack over years. Uh, you've created some of the software on your own, you've made a lot of acquisitions, and put, you even have a uh, you know, you even have a virtualization yep. uh, and a container stack, wh yep. which is, is, is again, back to the easy button. You want the full stack, we can offer it. If you want slices of that to connect, we have that for you. So, Fidelma, thank you for your time. I oh, really appreciate you. this. And I'm hoping we can get an update with you at Next Discover, but I'll talk to your team about that. That would be great. Yeah, no, let's do that. Uh, that'll be my next show, but it might be your next show. Oh, it, it, I, will, I will be there. You will be there? Absolutely. All right, we'll meet them. Yeah, thanks again. All right, thank you. Yeah. This is uh, Patrick Moorhead here in the HPE booth at NVIDIA GTC 2025. We are talking private uh, cloud AI. And by the way, I don't always do victory laps on my research, but I pretty much said this is going to be a hybrid world, and it's a hybrid world for clouds and for AI cloud. So here we are. Tune into all of our GTC and HPE content, and read our HPE research papers, too, on moreinsightsandstrategy.com. Take care. Bye-bye.